everyone. This is In Case You Missed It. Let's get straight into round six. And we start with the historic Western Derby. Around 56,500 fans packing into Optus Stadium. And the game certainly lived up to the hype. The Eagles continuing to prove the doubters wrong, claiming bragging rights with a narrow eight-point victory. Josh Kennedy wrote his way into the record books. His first goal of the game, his 515th in his career, overtaking Peter Stormich as West Coast all-time leading goal kicker. Now, the Dockers lost star Michael Walters early in the game to a left knee injury. Frio youngster Ed Langdon stepping up with 26 disposals and two goals in a career-best performance. It was a fiery clash, though. Eagle Chris Marston certainly pulling no punches. And in a tight and enthralling contest that went right down to the wire, the Eagles were too good in the end. What do they say about pressure and diamonds? Yo is a diamond. Now the controversial final Ross Glen Dinning medal. A tie. Shannon Hearn and Lockie Neal sharing the honour. On to Tigerland now and there's no sign of a premiership hangover. In fact, back-to-back -back flags are on the cards the way the Tigers are playing. The short break, no worries for Richmond as they steamrolled a brave Collingwood at the MCG on Sunday. The Pies took the game right up to the Tigers. Jeremy Howe providing another moment for the highlight reel. That brilliance though didn't rub off on his team Lyndon Dunn, who gifted Jack Higgins a double snag. Higgins gets two goals in 40 seconds. Now, Collingwood led at the main break, but couldn't hold off the rampaging premiers. Josh Caddy booting four goals, while Trent Cochin and Dustin Martin were influential with 29 touches each. Dustin Martin going to make it hard. Dustin! A couple of bad injuries too for the Pies out of that loss. James Aish will have scans on his knee tomorrow while Ben Reid hurt his Achilles. Well, one of the biggest talking points out of Sunday was D's big man Max Gorn's stash with a fan. And that is why it's this week's play of the round. Now, you can see here a bomber fan getting right in the face of Big Maxi and delivering an almighty spray. Gorn straight away pointing him out to security. The D's Ruckman having the last laugh, though, kicking his second goal of the game. And boy, did he let that fan know it. A little bit of a, a communication with an Essendon fan as well, popping a bit of advice uh, at one point. Can you share with us what he said? I uh, said a couple of words that are probably past the PG rating, but um, he gave me some inspiration to kick the goal, which is good. Annoying? Uh, not too bad. Um, he, I just let him knew. I let him knew that I had a better beard than him. So. I'm with Max on that one. His beard is certainly better and a little bit more luscious. As was his goal kicking and work in the ruck, gone pivotal to the Demons' win on Sunday over a lacklustre Essendon outfit. Both sides had the yips in front of goal in the opening term. First gamer, Charlie Spargo, making his mark, kicking not one but two goals on debut. Star Jesse Hogan had D's fans worried when he limped off with an ankle injury in the third term, but he came back on and had an impact as the Bombers' bad day got worse. Hello, oh, Hannon gets gifted one right on the line. You'd love him like that every time. The big spoil from Danaher. Travels 25 metres into the goal square where there's two Melbourne players waiting to mop it up. Bad luck there for Danaher. Now a hamstring injury to All-Australian forward Chad Wingard has soured Port Adelaide's 33-point win over North Melbourne on Saturday. In unusual circumstances, Wingard was injured taking a mark but strangely still took his shot at goal, which luckily he nailed, but it looks like he may have made the hammy worse. Now, the power will get gun ruckman Paddy Ryder back from an Achilles injury next week. Wingard, though, is set for a spell. Oh, I think he's done a hamstring. Pretty simple. You know, it was other leg. He's had issues at the start of the year with his other side, so he's done a hamstring. Chad's history of hamstrings, usually they're not too bad, but I was suspected he'll miss a couple of games. From the power to the Crows in Adelaide's 48-point win over Gold Coast at Adelaide Oval on Saturday has come at a cost, with skipper Taylor Walker also going down with a hamstring injury. Now, Walker went off in the second quarter and didn't return. He's now the seventh Crow to be sidelined by a hamstring injury. For the record, the club says it's just hamstring 
awareness, but they certainly won't be taking any risks with their captain. The good news, though, for the Crows was star midfielder Matt Crouch returning from his own hammy dramas. He didn't miss a beat in his first game since round two, racking up 30 touches and kicking Matt a goal. Crouch cruising past on his return. Slots through a goal. Quick response by the Crows. Well, we are just six rounds into the season, but already Hawks star Tom Mitchell has had a total of 224 disposals this season. On Saturday night in cold, dewy Launceston, the ball magnet notched up his fourth 40-plus possession game. He had 45 disposals and 10 clearances, helping to guide the Hawks to win number four for the year. And while speed star Isaac Smith definitely earned his pay with a four-goal performance, his match fee has ended up in the swear jar. Tim's given himself lots of opportunity to play well. I just said, oh, if you can take those opportunities, it's good. <laughs> Thanks, Izzy. All good, mate. Whoopsie daisies. Ah, the beauty of live TV. Moving on now, and Geelong coach Chris Scott has put match day reports firmly on the agenda this week after Jordan Murdoch's number was put in the book for this bump on Isaac Heaney. Now, my, match review officer Michael Christian is likely to throw this one straight out. Murdoch was clearly in possession of the ball. No issues there for him, but the report certainly had the Cats coach fired up post-match. Well, I, I think it highlights the abs absurdity of match day reports. The whole footy world will look at it and say the Geelong player had his hands on the ball going for the ball with perfect technique. It, it speaks more to how difficult it is to umpire and, and to ask them to be thinking about that as well when they don't need to um, is an error in my view. Adding to Scott's frustration was his side's failure to get the job done at home. It's the first time since 2006 that the Cats have lost at the Cattery after leading at half-time. The Swans were without stars Lance Franklin and Dan Hanabry, and in their absence, the skipper. Josh Kennedy was in red-hot form after a quiet past fortnight. The three-time All-Australian amassing 33 disposals and 13 clearances in a quintessential captain's game. Now, with Buddy sideline with a bruised heel, young swan Robbie Fox came to the party with some aerial brilliance. Oh, what a mark by Fox! The flying Fox takes a beauty! <laughs> And Carlton is definitely stone cold after crashing to the club's worst start to a season in its 122-year history. Friday night's loss to the Bulldogs, leaving the Blues 0-6 and six on the bottom of the ladder and a prickly Brendan Bolton in a world of pain. No, I'm concerned. I think you would have heard what I just said at the start. We're frustrated. Yeah. We're feeling it and it hurts. So we are concerned about not winning. All I'm saying is there's a reality we've gone through a rebuild. GWS has reaffirmed its top four aspirations with a 34-point win over a plucky Brisbane on Saturday night for a clash that was once again this weekend marred by poor kicking for, for goal from both sides. There were some brilliant majors. Lions youngster Eric Hipwood with a booming left foot beauty, reminiscent of Buddy Franklin in his pomp, but it couldn't top a shaking and baking Ryan Griffin. Oh, what a goal from Ryan Griffin! who scored in each and every one of his games since coming back from a long-term injury. From the highs of Griffin's goal to the low of the weekend, and that was this pearl up from St. Tim Membry. Big Paddy sticks it inside 50. Getting out the back, Membry has to be the Saints first. Oh, no! From point blank range, he's dumped it into the post. That reaction from the coach says it all. OK, time now for a look at the ladder. The Tigers and Eagles on top with five wins, then five clubs on four wins, making for a very tight top eight. To the bottom half, and Geelong and Collingwood are on the cusp and way down the bottom, the winless Blues and Lions. And that is in case you missed it, done and dusted for another round. Enjoy the week ahead. We'll see you next time.